Hi, and welcome to the first installment of Sin City Church's YouTube slash podcast, where we're going to hopefully bring you something new and exciting every week from our pastors. This week, Pastor Tim and I are going to be reviewing music. We gave each other an album to review that we personally liked, and now we're going to see what we thought about them. First off, I'll tell you what I gave Pastor Tim. I gave Pastor Tim Petra's 1983 album, Not of This World. Now, if you're not a fan of Petra, then I'll just kind of tell you a little bit about them. They are a band that started back in the 70s, the late 70s, and they were one of the first contemporary Christian artists on the scene. They've kind of been the leader in the field for many years, and we have sort of two camps of Petra. We have what we call the classic Petra, and then we just have uh, Petra. The difference being when they changed lead singers. Uh, the lead singer of this particular version of Petra in 1983 was Greg Exvalls, and we consider that classic Petra. And they have since retired, the, the band has. They will get together every now and then and maybe do a special or a one-off, that sort of thing. Uh, in general, though, they've retired from the music industry and don't record any new music as the band Petra. Now, Petra had been a guitar-driven, kind of just standard rock band that you would normally get in the 70s, that classic rock sound. And as they moved into the 80s, they did add keyboards to it. And this record came out just before they kind of ventured into more of that 80s poppy sound. And we get 10 songs on this record that are bookended on each end by the doxology. You get Visions doxology to start with and Vix Vix Visions doxology reprise to end. In between, we get Not of This World, uh, Bama Seat, Grave Robber. And Grave Robber is one of my favorite contemporary Christian songs of all time. And also just one of my, probably my favorite Petra song as well. Uh, because it talks about the grave. It talks about the resurrection. It talks about our family and friends that have gone on before us. And the hope that we have to see them again. And the hope that they have in where they are now. Uh, we then go to Blinded Eyes, Not By Sight, Lift Him Up, Pied Piper, Occupy, and God Pleaser, which is another favorite of mine. You can just kind of imagine. We're going to let Tim discuss this record uh, more than I am. Now, Tim, Pastor Tim gave me an artist that I should have known uh, because he apparently opened and worked for, uh, or worked in front of Petra on many of the shows that I should have been a part of. Now, I don't recall him being there at all. And this artist is John Cox. He comes to us out of Dallas, Texas. And if you go to look up John Cox, contemporary Christian singer, you're not going to find much. For whatever reason, he's not on the radar any longer. And the record that Tim gave me was Sunny Day. It was his first record. I'm going to read you what all music says about this record, and then I'm going to disagree with it a little bit, okay? John Cox's debut album, Sunny Day, is a reflective slice of adult alternative pop, demonstrating his skills as a singer-songwriter. Although his lyrics are occasionally a little labored and his music sometimes lacks hooks, Sunny Day shows enough potential to make it a rewarding listen. Well, first of all, yes, it is a very rewarding listen. I enjoyed this record a lot. And I do a, much of my listening I do in my truck. So I was able to listen to this record in my truck several times, listen to it at home as well. And one of the things that I always look for if I'm going to be listening to music in my vehicle is I don't want to be put to sleep, right? We're driving around. You want to be awake and uh, keep, keep your eye out. And uh, this record does that. I don't care. I don't need a hook in a song. Uh, you know, the hook is kind of that thing that gets stuck in your brain sometimes. I don't need that. I don't need that one little phrase always stuck in my brain from a singer uh, to enjoy their music, especially. Uh, adult alternative pop. No, I wouldn't say that either. It's pretty well straightforward, um, you know, kind of uh, eagle-esque music, I guess, because we've got an acoustic guitar, electric guitar, uh, some piano, bass, and drums. Basically, believe it or not, what you're going to hear from the Sin City Church worship team a lot of Sunday mornings. That's what our worship team consists of. So it's not that far off. I would say that in the contemporary Christian field that uh, John Cox sounds a little bit like a stripped down third day, um, Jennifer Knapp, Jars of Clay, early Stephen Curtis Chapman, that sort of thing. 
It's very approachable, so it doesn't slam me in the face with a bunch of screaming guitars or anything like that. It's just really nice, approachable music. Now, with Sunny Day, you get uh, 10 songs on the record. You get Sunny Day, Little Change, What Are We Doing Here? Great tune. Uh, one of my favorites on there. All You Need, I Don't Know, I Need You, Tell Me, Heaven Hears You, Mystery, The Hand I Hold. Uh, Heaven Hears You... Um, probably my favorite song on here. Uh, John seems to approach a lot of his writing from his own perspective. Again, I don't know much about him because I can't find much about him. It just isn't there. You can't buy his music uh, on Amazon. It's not available. It's not available on Spotify. I did find it on iTunes, so I was able to purchase this record on iTunes. There is some stuff on YouTube, a uh, few little things, but nothing really there. So he has no social media presence to speak of. Uh, basically what I just read to you from All Music is about all you're going to find, that sort of thing. He did rela release one other record uh, in uh, 2000, uh, and that is called 80 Years. Sunny Day was released in 1997. And 1997, say about 95 to 99, was kind of the peak of this style of contemporary Christian music. That's when, like I said, we had a third day, Jars of Clay, those guys in there as well, and Jennifer Knapp. And, you know, like I said, it's really approachable. If you're somebody that hasn't dipped their toe into the contemporary Christian music scene, this would be a great place to start as would any of those other artists I just mentioned as well. Uh, 80 Years came about in uh, 2000, and again, uh, not available anywhere except for iTunes that I can find. I, I have no idea why this guy dropped off the face of the earth. I, I hope he's okay. <laughs> I don't know anything else about him. It's really odd. And you find a lot of other people that have done reviews of his records when they came out, and, and they're always glowing reviews of, I love this, this came at me at a special time in my life, or I needed what this said to me. You know, just all of these things. And I have no idea why he didn't blow up bigger than he is, uh, other than to say that the... The music scene in Christian music, just like it is in rock or country, any other of those, you know, it's a lot of times based upon who you know and where you're at. If you're at the right time, at the right place, and it, yeah, it's just, it's disappointing. So, and then again, maybe he left it on, on his own, you know, just decided this is what I'm doing. I did this. I'm done with it. I'm moving on. I'm going to do something else at this point. That happens a lot as well. We all go through those seasons and changes in our lives. Uh, I will say, though, that if you have the ability to purchase this through iTunes, go ahead and purchase it through iTunes. I like to always, when I buy music, I like to purchase the physical copy of the music. And I do that because, first of all, the artist uh, it, it gets paid more money that way. Uh, now, if you go out and you buy it used, a used record or used CD, uh, the artist doesn't get any of that money. When, a new art, when an artist releases a new record, that sort of thing, uh, go out and buy the physical copy of it. That's how they get the most money. Then you can use something like a Spotify or an Apple Music or an Amazon Music, that sort of thing, YouTube Music, to listen to the record. And uh, they do get paid a penance on that play. It's not like it used to be when it was radio airplay at all. And that way, uh, you know, you're able to enjoy it wherever you are, in your car, your phone, your ear pods, whatever. And then you've bought the physical copy then as well that the artist gets paid a little bit more money for. And that way they can continue to make music to bring us new music, especially if it's an artist you enjoy, you know, support them that way. Well, I'm excited to hear what Tim has to say about Petra. He uh, told me he did a lot of research and was digging into Petra. And so that had me a little worried that maybe I wasn't going to bring enough to the table here because I couldn't find very much about John Cox. Uh, and if you Google John Cox, musician, you're going to find there's an English fellow that's put out a ton of records. Uh, it's not the same guy. This John Cox, like I said, comes out of Dallas. And you can... The easiest thing to do is Google John Cox, uh, Christian artist or Christian singer, and that'll bring you uh, right off the top that, that brings you the all music guide that I was just at, and it gives you some links to some videos, and it gives you a link right away uh, to Apple Music as well. There is a Facebook link here. 
the last time he was active was in 2014. And I'm not even 100% sure it's the same John Cox. Um, because the, the picture looks not quite right. And he's only got 200 and some followers. So I'm not sure it's the same. Anyway, you can find his music uh, easily, though, on uh, Apple Music. And uh, that's the, the best way to go about it. I think if you wanted to purchase the physical copy of it, a CD, they're for sale for $40 on Amazon. And it's not new. It's going to be used. Uh, so he doesn't get any money for that. So buy, at this point, all I can tell you is buy the Apple iTunes version of it. And that way at least somebody gets some money out that's, that's with his camp. All right, let's hear what Pastor Tim has to say. And as well, leave things down in the comments below, letting us know maybe what you would like to hear from the pastors, if you have some questions that you'd like to see answered, that sort of thing. Maybe you have an idea. Maybe you've got a, a, a fun story that needs to be told as well, and we'll, we'll come interview you. Uh, we're always looking for ideas to uh, advance our, our, our YouTube presence and our podcasting presence, and this is just the start of it. Uh, I think it's going to be really awesome. Tell your friends, tell your family to watch Sunday mornings, of course. Uh, also to watch here on YouTube and see what's coming next because as, as we grow this YouTube, it helps the church. And that's always a great thing. That way we can continue to bring you uh, great content as well. So here's Pastor Tim. Take it away. Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of the podcast Steve Weiss and I are doing about Christian music. Basically, he gave me the album Petra, Not of This World, to review, and I gave him John Cox, Sunny Day, to review. Now, honestly, the first time I had ever listened to a Petra song uh, was when I clicked on the link that he sent me from Spotify. And I know for some of you, you'll go like, well, you're a worship pastor and you're a Christian musician and artist. You should have heard of Petra before, but honestly, a little background is probably helpful so that you understand uh, where I'm coming from as I review these albums. So I grew up in a family that was very musical. Uh, my mom played piano and taught me to play piano. My dad played guitar, taught me to play guitar. Uh, my mom could sing harmony, taught me kind of how to sing harmony and I could hear harmony probably from her. My dad sang as well. Um, one of my earliest memories is of you know, going to sleep at night listening to my mom play piano in the living room. Now, it was very um, classical. Um, my mom always played classical music. And the songs that my dad played were usually uh, like, we call them campfire songs, you know, like Will the Circle Be Unbroken and, you know, songs like that, songs for kids. I really had no introduction to or no exposure to uh, music, you know, the wider world of music, especially contemporary music and and pop music and all those types of music because uh, we were raised in a very conservative, uh, ultra conservative Christian home. In fact, I think the only album I ever listened to growing up was my aunt, uh, Ruth, put out a kind of a folk infused Christian uh, album when I was really young and we played that in the car all the time. Apart from that, I had really no clue about uh, Christian music. And then when I got to junior high, I started like sneaking uh, my friend's music to listen to. And I would, I would go down, we lived in Singapore at the time, and I would sneak down to the stores and buy bootleg copies of, of albums. And uh, I was listening to like I went from nothing to listening to Def Leppard, Pyromania, and uh, Madonna and Prince and Eurythmics and Journey and you know like all these great bands, Men Without Hats and Loverboy and Brian Adams. Uh, yes, I am Canadian. Uh, so these were kind of the, the bands I was listening to. So I, I kind of totally missed out on the entire Christian music scene that was kind of coming to life at the time. And Honestly, I sort of missed out on classic rock in general, uh, like the like Zep and the Stones and Who and the Doors. Like I missed out on all that kind of music. So, fast forward to the early '90s. My wife and I um, are newly married, and we are becoming believers. 
and we realized that we wanted some Christian music in our house. And so we went to the local Christian bookstore and we just basically bought what was popular and what was contemporary at the time. So Jars of Clay, Newsboys, Michael W. Smith, uh, and John Cox was the first album we ever bought together, which is why I gave that album uh, to Steve to review. And again, I kind of totally missed out on the whole Petra White Hart, uh, you know, kind of genre of music and Christian music. Now, since then, I've gone back uh, in my life and I've discovered not only classic Christian music, uh, but classic music in general, classic rock, Pink Floyd and, and bands like that. But somehow Petra, I don't know, just <laughs> for whatever reason, just escaped me. Uh, I'm not even sure why. So when Steve gave me this album to review, I sort of had to do a deep dive and a discovery into who is Petra and, and what are Petra all about. And I've discovered that Petra really, it, to me at least, seems like Petra is one person. It's Bob Hartman. And there's been a lot of lineup changes to Petra, different vocalists uh, who have come and gone, different guitarists, drummers, bass players, all that stuff. But uh, Hartman has always, Bob Hartman has always been kind of the one steady person around which Petra has revolved. So in essence, like I kind of figured that in my understanding, Petra sort of is Bob Hartman and most of the writing comes from Bob Hartman. So this was a really interesting album for me. Uh, to dive into and to listen to and uh, so I've got some thoughts on on the album and some thoughts on some of the songs and then we'll talk a bit about John Cox. Uh, the first song in the album is called Doxology. It's an instrumental and as soon as I heard it I thought Blade Runner. Like I just thought wow here's Vangelis, here's Blade Runner. This is this is taking me back to that scene of uh, you know the very first scene of Blade Runner where the the ships are flying into the across the city and, and uh, that that sort of really took me there and then the song not of this world is the first song amazing harmonies on this song really reminded me of kansas uh, and some of their great harmonies uh, maybe even some early boston um, great lyrics to this song um, great message to this song uh, the only thing that was missing to me was like that great classic uh, 70s early 80s rock guitar solo uh, instead, they do like a, a keyboard solo, which I guess was, um, this was the album that they were sort of starting to turn a corner and move to some different sounds. And so um, the keyboard was kind of maybe going out a little bit and they were bringing in more of a rock and roll sound. And this was the last album, I think, where they really still tried to feature some keyboard stuff. And Steve can probably set me right on that, uh, but that at least seems like what it was. And then the second song is Beam a Seat. And all apologies, Steve. Uh, Beam a seat kind of reminded me of Spinal Tap. Uh, it's just, I don't know what it was about this song. I just listened to it and I thought, yeah, I can see David St. Hubbins uh, singing this song with his long flowing hair. And anyway, so it just kind of reminded me of that. But then um, my favorite song on the album, and I think it was your favorite song too, Steve, was Grave Robber. Uh, this is kind of everything you want in a rock song. There's two of them on this album that I, f I felt that way about. The other one was Pied Piper. But Grave Robber to me, just the message of it, the construction of the song, um, the, the way it was sung, the lyrics of it, it just has a great melody. And uh, it just, it kind of reminded me of early kind of Def Leppard, maybe a little bit of Rush, and just two bands I absolutely love. And uh, so... It's just a joy to listen to those songs and to just get immersed in that great kind of rock and roll uh, feeling. And then there's another song on this album that sort of um, is different from everything else on the album. It's called Lift Him Up. And Lift Him Up is kind of like a poppy praise and worship song, which you wouldn't expect on an album that's kind of more classic rock and roll. But I guess at the time, um, there wasn't really a lot of, uh, well, there really wasn't any sort of praise and worship albums like we know them today. And this was one of the first kind of praise and worship songs uh, that was out there. And I think this album is from 1986, I want to say. So really, praise and worship was really starting, you know, hadn't even really started yet. And this was kind of the song that started a lot of it. And and I discovered later that uh, Petra did a praise and worship album. And 
it's inspired like tons and tons of, of artists, including one of my favorite artists in praise and worship was Sonic Flood. And they talk about how this Petra album really uh, spoke to them as well and, and kind of got them interested in doing praise and worship more in a rock and roll uh, type of style. So I really appreciated that. Man, Petra, four Grammy Awards, uh, 10 Dove Awards, uh, just like incredible um, contribution to the Christian music scene. And, uh, you know, despite the fact that I guess Phil, or Phil, I guess uh, Bob Hartman had some health issues and, and touring was difficult and he kind of retired from touring for a while, but Petra is still going and, and Bob Hartman is back with the band and they're doing their original lineup 50th tour this year. They've been together 50 years uh, in different uh, iterations of the band, but they're back on tour uh, this year playing a bunch of shows, including shows in Germany. And uh, so it's just really cool to see the longevity and the passion that just wouldn't allow a band to say, well, you know what, like our first couple albums didn't really do well and our label isn't sure and we're not sure and people are leaving the band and, you know, it's just down to, you know, two guys and what are we going to do? And then they just continue to have faith and they continue to believe in what they were doing. And, uh, and after a couple of albums of so-so sales, they, they kind of really hit it big with this album, Not of This World, and then their next album, uh, which really took them into... Uh, the stratosphere of Christian music. So thank you so much, Steve, for uh, introducing me to Petra. Uh, it was funny, we were at a church together last week and Steve was telling me that uh, there's a new album that just came out and he was showing me the cover of it and he's just super excited for us to review that one. So uh, I, I sense uh, more Christian classic metal in our future, uh, which is really cool. So the album I gave uh, Steve to review was John Cox's Sunny Day, and he released this album in 1996. Uh, he's from Texas originally, and he moved to Nashville to be a Christian musician, songwriter, singer, and signed with uh, a, a label called Questar. And I really like this album. Um, it spoke to both my wife and I just when we put it on the first time. I, I play acoustic guitar uh, and I'm a singer-songwriter initially. I mean, that's mostly what I do. And that seems to be what John Cox does too. He's really an acoustic guitar player, singer-songwriter. He crafts his songs very well. And uh, just the construction of this album, the production of this album, just was everything I kind of uh, wanted in an album. In fact, I still have it. Uh, this is it right here. Um, that's the album, John Cox, Sunny Day, and it's, but yes, it's a CD, um, yes, I bought one of the first CDs, um, when they came out, and this album just really, uh, spoke to me a lot. So, the tracks on this album are Sunny Day, the title track, which is a great song, Little Change Would Do You Good, uh, my favorite song, uh, What Are We Doing Here, um, one of the verses, one of the, my life verses has been, from the book of Mark, and it's what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? And, you know, I think about that constantly just in terms of uh, what we're doing here on this earth and why we're here. And this song is exactly that. Um, the lyrics were like, I, I met a wealthy man. He said he had a plan to build a tower up into the sky. And it took a while to see that the wealthy man was me. So what are we doing here without his love? It's just a fantastically written song. And then all you need... Uh, another one, I Don't Know, I love that song. Uh, Tell Me, Heaven Hears, Heaven Hears You is such a great song. Heaven Hears You When You Pray in the Middle of the Night in the Darkness. Um, he's there for you. And then This Hand I Hold, uh, the last song on the album, This Very Hand I Hold Makes the Winds Obey, Chases My Fears Away, uh, This Very Hand I Hold. So it's such a, a cool album. Um, and I guess John released another album independently a few years later because... Uh, his his label, <clears throat> after he signed with them, they decided to go in a different direction, not with him, but just in general. They they left Christian music completely and uh, left, it seems like they left music a lot and went into other pursuits and other endeavors outside of the Christian field and kind of left John on his own. And um, he kind of was an independent artist for a while, from what I can tell, um, was a worship leader, released a, an independent album a few years later. And then he kind of just drops off the map. And it's one of the strangest things. Like, you know, we often hear about one hit wonders and stuff like that in, in music. And 
I mean, it happens all the time in Christian music. I mean, I'm part of a band called Finding Faith, and we put out an album a few years ago with Sony Records and had a, a really big hit, number one hit in Australia, and then just kind of, you know, faded away. Um, wanted to do a second album, and a record label was kind of going in other directions, and we were going in another direction. And so, you know, I mean, this happens all the time in any style of music and to any artist. And so, it was interesting for me because at least Andrew and I, who's part of Finding Faith, we're still active on social media and we're still, you know, um, still trying to have a presence, even if it's not releasing albums, just for good in the world. I'm a worship leader. And so I'm, that's part of my social media presence. But John Cox just kind of dropped off the map. So Steve, I know, went, went looking for him a little bit, doing some social media searches, and I did as well. And it appears that um, John became a composer and worked in Nashville as a composer, uh, most famously for uh, David Phelps. He worked on a bunch of David Phelps' albums. Uh, he was a guitar player, I think, for a little while for some other bands. And then here's the thing is that there are, there are a couple of John Coxes uh, in the world who are artists. There's a John Cox out of England and then a, another guy named John Cox. So when you look up John Cox online, it, it can bring up all these different people. So uh, one, one article I read said John Cox became a songwriter for Warner Chapel Music. So I went on to Warner Chapel Music's website and he's not listed there. And so I don't know if that's uh, another John Cox or if John Cox was there for a while and is no longer there, I don't know. Uh, his, like Steve said, his last uh, social media post was from 2012 and it appears he was doing uh, some sort of uh, show in uh, Green Bay or was Wisconsin, I think it was, and and that's it. So yeah, I don't I don't know what happened to John. John, if if you somehow uh, hear this or somebody tells you about this or whatever, uh, contact us. I would love to know what you're doing because your album was definitely one of the most influential albums uh, in my early Christian journey, especially my early Christian journey with Christian music, and it had a huge and still does continue to have a huge impact on. Um, my worship leading style and the type of music I love to listen to and it forms the basis of the kind of music I write so would love to know what you're doing so there are the two albums Petra Not of This World John Cox Sunny Day and I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, episode number one and we will be back uh, soon with episode number two I already know what album I'm going to give Steve to review and I think he knows what album he's going to give me to review so uh, until next time, take care. God bless. Have a great day. Go listen to some good music.